Hello, everybody. Welcome to the big reunion episode. It's been a long time since we've all been here. This is, uh, what is this called here? Slam, that's right. <laughs> This is your co-host, Mike Allen, as always, enjoyed by... Joshua Mervell. And uh, what are we talking about today? Oh, yeah, that's right, Starman. That's right. We I was going to say we have a guest host for every Starman, but there's actually more Starmans than a motherfucker, which we're going to find out on these next two episodes. We want to thank uh, returning guest host G.I. Jolie for joining us. Hello, hello. I've come for the Starman. Yeah. No way. I, isn't it funny... Everyone's like, what's so special about Starman? Literally nothing. I arbitrarily was like, wow, I don't have anything to do. I have the ability to read a million comics and I'm also available Wednesday night. <laughs> it, it's also strange that you came back for a two-parter, which we've never done before, but... That was a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> when <laughs> I received the, hard the emails, way. yeah. It's like, it oh, two episodes? Okay. I also made it worse by sending the wrong link, but that's okay. Anyway, um, also joining us again, Bex Luthor. Hey, I've, I've made it. What's a, what's a syndicate podcast without a little bit of errors, right? You know, some technical <laughs> problems, sending the wrong emails. It's too many star men. Can't log on to Skype. So what's the occasion? Why are, you, why are you joining us, Becca? What's the occasion? Yep. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't ready for a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you guys are my only friends, and the only oh. time I get to see and talk to you is if I read the comics you send me. So. Perfect. That's that's all. Also, it works with all my friends, love Starman, big Starman. Everybody fan. does. Big Starman stand, uh, a stand man. You could even call me mm. because of the amount of Starman that I love. Right. Just. I can't tell if she's being sarcastic. We're gonna or test not. that theory tonight. We're gonna see how much you actually love Starman. I'm ready. Um. All right. Good. Now. It was a. It was, as some people know, we do um, scans. We sometimes read scans of these comics because we're unable to obtain the original copies. Because some of these, as we can see, were published in like 1941. Uh, we are going. Well, you to don't have this issue? No, I don't actually. No, oh. and I've never read it before. No, we're hmm. gonna read the first appearance of Starman One. Now we should let our listeners know that there are a few Starmans that we're not gonna talk about. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly say that at one point Batman <laughs> was a Starman for like one issue. Oh. And there was a Starman villain. We're not gonna talk about. We're gonna mention them later, but we're not gonna review any comics with them. But right Ooh. now, we're gonna talk about the official first Starman. Which, by the way, I should point out, when John Carpenter did a movie called Starman in 1984-ish, I think they had to get permission from DC to Ooh. use the name Starman because this is a copyrighted trademark name. So anyway, that Josh. Is... A very fun fact. You can click away. Um, yeah, and actually, real quick, for any oh. listeners out there, yeah, we do also record this uh, podcast in video form as well. So if you have not read these issues or don't know what Starman looks like, you can head over to our website um, at thecomicbooksyndicate.com or our YouTube channel and uh, actually watch this podcast. And there... You'll be able to see our lovely faces and the comic itself and the specific pages we're talking about. So, um, do that. Yeah, do it. Okay, so guess what? For those that are not watching, if you're only listening, right now we're going to talk about the original Starman who has a red costume with green underwear and boots and a green cape and a yellow star on his chest and a little fin on his head. Cool costume. Mm -hmm. He is the one that carries a gravity rod. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yep. Just to keep them straight. Anyway. Um, that was so, so straight like holding the rod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we start off. Sorry. <laughs> kind of a splash page here with Starman already in action. We we get a we get a crisis. We get um, it turns out that um, someone is like kind of overloading all of the electricity in all of North America from Maine to California. It says right. And uh, yeah, it says all telephone communication ends as the nation's switchboards fail. There's a fire and the electrical energy plan, a plane crashes. So they're trying to figure out what to do. Now we have to keep in mind the context of this time, Superman was big, so everything was kind of imitating Superman, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, well, what are we gonna do? Well, we, okay, only one person can save us. We'll have to call Starman. <laughs> 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 
Crappy call. What was the name? Call, um... Ted. <laughs> Ted. Yeah, exactly. Ted Knight. No, so then we cut into Ted Knight and his date on a dinner date. And basically, um, the lights, you know, crash. And then, and then he, oh, he realizes that he's being called. And then he leaves. He grabs his gravity, gravity rod. And he goes, oh, the gravity rod is vibrating. That means a desperately urgent call from Chief Allen. <laughs> and then we get a giant close-up of the gravity rod. And says the gravity rod, a miracle of science which utilizes the powerful infrared rays from distant stars. And so that's what he uses to change into Starman. He's like, now for some action. And then he flies up in, into the air and he goes like, the rod will draw me to the secret meeting place where Alan awaits. This isn't and even that, the gay star man. This no, is, exactly. This is yeah. we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. And so apparently this gravity rod is charged with stellar energy. And that's where he gets his powers from. So then he's flying. And uh, Chief, or uh, Chief, is it Cliff, uh, Chief Allen or Cliff? Uh, no, it's Allen. I don't know who it is. But he's some guy named Allen. And he's like, in the capsule. He goes, if the capsule made contact, he should be here soon. Starman's like, sooner than you think, Allen. And he's just standing there. Starman! So basically, he tells him what's going on, and he's like, America's communication and life facilities are all paralyzed. So he's like, okay, well, I better go take care of this. So he uses the gravity rod. It kind of powers him and pulls him along, and he's flying through the air, and then he sees an electrical discharge coming from a mountain. So he goes down, and there's like this big metal door on like a mountain, and he burns through with his gravity rod, and he sees some guy running away. He goes into the gaping hole, and he sees a guy running away, and then... um. And he's like, he flies on, into Sean. a gaping hole with his yeah. stellar rod. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The guy's like, yow! And then he grabs him by the back of the neck and like flips him around. <laughs> and then uh, and then he's like, I'm going to become the most powerful man in the world. And then he's like, no, you're not. And so then... Um, <laughs> yeah, he just says, nah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no, this guy works for the bad guy. So, yeah. then, the, so then this guy helps him. Uh, he lets him into the base. And so they're walking through. And the guy's name is, what is the bad guy's name? Is it Dr. Doog? Doog. <laughs> yeah. Doog, what a name. Anyway, so then he comes in and um, he, uses his, he uses his gravity rod to zap one guy. And then he jumps down and he rescues another guy. And then he's confronted by Dr. Doog. And then Dr. Doog releases like a trap door. And Starman also fall, it almost falls in. But then he uses his gravity rod to uh, kind of help him stay there as if it's solid ground. Then he fights all the other henchmen, and then Dr. Doog is like, I'm going to get you with the Ultra Dynamo. And then he tries to zap Starman, but he uses his gravity rod to kind of like counter the energy. And then he chases <laughs> after him, but then Dr. Doog ends up falling into his own trap door. And that's pretty much the end of the story. And yeah. from that, a legacy of 80 years ensues. Okay, let's talk about Starman. <laughs> that's the end i love this good genuinely i mean yeah it wasn't bad what did you like about it becca i thought it was so campy mm -hmm. <laughs> and so just you gave a six-year-old and said can you write a comic book and this is what he wrote he, right. he, went to, he found the bad guy and he used his powerful rod to just it's just a plot device stick it does whatever he needs it to do uh the bad guy fault there's trap doors everywhere <laughs> People be followed in trapdoors all over the place. Bad guy loses. Mm -hmm. End of end of the story. Not a whole lot happens, and it is riveting, at least to me. It's <laughs> it definitely. Just... It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. It's also simple enough that I know what you mean. A kid could have written it, but it's not bad. Yeah, I think Gosh. that's that makes it like good and bad. Like I th that's its strong points and its weakness. Like I, I think that the campiness is so great. It does have this like lightheartedness to it. Um, the goofy costume and powers is really fun to read. Um, even just like the mustache twirling bad guy, he just wants to enslave the world. Like I, I think that's what it is. Or he wants to like destroy things. Like he, he, it's really unclear. Oh. Yeah. Just bad guy stuff. Um. But where it does kind of um, fall f short for me is a lot of the times they're kind of just like, uh, yeah, he uses the rod and it stops the machine. And you didn't see this, but the machine also exploded and all the bad guys are, are you know, gone now. So it's just the right. main bad guy that's running. So it's like they kind of like yada yada 
sure the the, the story uh <laughs> through like little dialogue boxes but all in all this one was pretty fun like especially with a lot of these like character origins they're really kind of stale a lot of the time yeah. so this one was surprisingly uh really fun and entertaining and held my attention more than probably any of the other origins we've really talked about for the most part like even superman is like it's classic easy, and and easy. and you know iconic but it is very much like oh yeah this the ship crashed and there's a kid and now he's superman like it's very well, very quick right yeah the it's the original the right like the yeah. the the first appearance so yeah this is so, this feels the most like rounded maybe better than average so yeah. G. julie what do you think um just to go off of a point that josh was talking about is the whole like the whole yada yada of the the commentary in the sort of yellow boxes yeah it all in my head i'm a person who can like hear um uh the Narration. inner dialogue inner dialogue so it all sounds like it's coming out over a loudspeaker yeah <laughs> like an mm. old-timey phone or an yeah. old-timey radio not an old-timey phone um but i liked how there was no um you know the the first eight pages weren't some gallivanting mars or intergalactic journey like flashback right. about where he's from it's just i'm on a date i have a rod the <laughs> lights are out i'm gonna go save uh, new york gape, i'm gonna go into this gaping hole yeah mm -hmm. i need to go into this gaping hole to save new york mm -hmm. with my rod and then he does it and then he just goes back to his date and then I'm sure somewhere down the line they flash back to his actual origin or they talk about it a little more, but it's good that this is this is it. You, you know, they just focus on the adventure. That's great. It's funny you should mention that. I just want to quickly say, apparently, like many of these Golden Age superheroes, his origin was not revealed until Roy Thomas decided to write one for him. And Roy Thomas hmm. did that a lot in the 80s with All-Star Squadron and Secret Origins, and, and Starman's one of them, so... We do eventually find out the origin, which we'll probably touch on later. But um, I just want to say there's obviously something to this character because not only was the name reused like six more times, but the fact that this character was the one that James Robinson chose to kind of uh, bring back in the 90s. I mean, it, it does mean there's something cool about this character. Like his gravity rod does eventually get upgraded to be a cosmic rod. That could be mm. part of it. I don't know. Yeah. So that's part okay. of it. And, and it also... Have that has defined powers at yeah. one point. True, true. Which we'll talk about. So obviously, I guess what I can say is, I think like Josh, I think it's above average. So this is an above average Golden Age hero, right? Mm -hmm. So he lasted all through the 40s. He joined the Justice Society. But then like all of the other characters, uh, he is, his, his strip was canceled. And then he was revived in the 60s as an Earth 2 character, along with uh, Black Canary, I think, and Dr. Fate. Hmm. Um, but then instead of kind of introducing like a rebooted version of this character, they decided to just create a whole new character from cloth. Uh, and we have Jerry Conway to thank for that, whom we've met, and he's really cool. Uh, and then Josh, if you can just bring up the next issue, which is first issue special number 12. So they figured out around this time that first issues sold better than any other issue. So they thought, what if every issue of the series is a first issue? That's why it's called First Issue Special. Mm -hmm. um, now, who volunteered to summarize this story? I don't remember. Oh, I Josh? Did. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So, yeah, here we go. Um, yeah. Starman like, number one. Yep. Has well, he First Issue Special number 12. For, sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> has he come to save Earth or destroy it? So, uh, 10.58 p.m., we see a spaceship crash land on Earth. And um, before this ship crashes, we see this blue-skinned alien-looking man kind of fly out. And he lands on the ground. And, of course, he lands in a rough part of town and a bunch of strange talking hooligans uh try and attack him 
and he easily bests them all. Um, his skin is impenetrable. Uh, he's super strong and is able to toss them around. And um, uh, nothing seems to be affecting him. So he walks off. We cut over to 10 minutes later. And uh, the military shown up to the crash. And we get this little scene of these two um, people in the military essentially fighting over who has jurisdiction over this alien crash or, or well, right. they think it's a plane at this point. Um, and while they're arguing with each other, the ship explodes and it actually kills one of them. So it <laughs> kind of puts the one guy in charge. Um, we cut over to back to this guy and, um, he breaks into a um, record store and right. Yeah. Wait, uh, a grocery, grocery store. Grocery store. Um, and uh, the owner of the grocery store is there and pulls out a gun to try and protect uh, himself in the store. But uh, we see Starman kind of use his rays to make the gun just disappear. Uh, but doing so kind of used the last of his energy and he passes out. Uh, we cut over to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this one before. How many times have you said that on the show? I've probably a lot. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, and... Uh, we see that there is this colony uh, of aliens living on the moon who have kind of developed this technology. They, it's, it's unseeable to the human eye or whatever. Uh, but we see that there's this kind of conflict happening within these people. Um, and they're after this person that has um, run away that we've seen on Earth. Um mccall thompson it's it's revealed as this guy's name uh so thomas this or thomas thomas mccall thomas, thomas sorry or michael thomas michael sure mccall thomas uh anyways we see him like zap one of the guards who was in charge of um executing him and we see this girl is here i don't know <laughs> <laughs> he said yeah. he said he sends uh this like big bodyguard guy to go and um track him down after uh putting him through the test of crushing a chair uh <laughs> <laughs> now we cut to chapter two and it begins with a flashback it's super weird i was confused at first yeah because they confusing. they are on this alien planet and then we cut to part two where they're on the alien planet again but this is like before so this is all happening in uh michael's nightmare as he's like yeah. recounting the events that, that 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 have happened in the past so we see that they're kind of like arguing the mind council their plans it's wrong please we have to stop it blah blah blah, blah. one of the guards hears this and just blasts the woman that is like disagreeing with the council. She turns into dust and uh, Michael is like, hey, that, that sucks. So he starts beating up these people and he's like, OK, well, now that she's dead, I guess I'll also take up her cause. And I think these people are evil as well. So we see that the, he's been captured. They take him to this council. They... Um, they're, they say they're going to execute him and then we watch him escape and, you know, jump into a spaceship. And that's where it kind of, you know, uh, leads into the beginning of this comic. Uh, we see him wake up from this bad dream and the uh, grocery store owner and his wife are there kind of like taking care of him. They make him some soup and he guzzles it down and he kind of just leaves. He's like, sorry, I've got a lot of work to do. Um I can't stick around. So he flies off and we cut over to the military people. They're chatting and they're like, listen, that wasn't 
a plane that was a spaceship. Which is weird because the that same almost identical spaceship is in the water there. Anyways, the, but they're like yeah, it's, it's like another funny looking plane. Like it's it's <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. Yeah, so that's how they realize because it's it's the like bot like the guard. Mm-hmm. It's his ship or whatever that he's parked there. So they realized that it was an alien ship that exploded before. Um, this guy finds Mikkel and they start beating each other up. And that's where this ends. Like it leaves on this cliffhanger of who's going to punch who. That's it. Uh, that's the end. That's can I just say. <laughs> dumb. You, everyone will be happy to know. This character was not seen again for 30 years. Uh, this this story was never finished. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, it was never finished. And he disappeared until, I think, ni- the 1990s. Yeah, when he was revived. Like, when he was referenced wow. in the new Starman series. Yeah, so this is all we got, folks. Talk Reference, about but didn't... I had no idea. Yeah. Talk about going out on a high note, though. I mean, um, Dang. All I can say is I think this has all the elements of a good kids comic, like aliens, you know, crashing on Earth, fish out of water, colony on the moon. But the storytelling is confusing as hell. The art is not great. The writing is not great. The costume is weird. The costume is very weird. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Like, I like the fact that he's blue skin. I like the fact that the colors are purple and white because it's very unusual for superhero, but... Everything else, like... I also don't understand the use of um, the, the the translation gimmick. It's not even funny. Which gimmick was that? <clears throat> Where <clears throat> we only hear this Starman talk in gibberish. Oh. Is this the same one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, but then when we go- goddess, Klaatu, yeah. And then we go to his home planet, cut to the moon. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, by the way, we can understand all of their word bubbles because it's translated. Yeah. And they all have like these pseudo oriental names. It's it's mm. very it's terrible. Like, like, here's the thing. Uh, I, I'll save my comments for later. Becca, what do you think of this? <laughs> not not great. Didn't okay. Didn't like this one. Zero out of ten. Ooh. Um. No, I was so bored and like not interested at all. Like I don't care about these people, and this is the issue that was supposed to get you to do that. So, um, and like he just seems so blasé about it because his his girlfriend or whatever. She's like she's like we have to warn Earth that these people are coming. And he's like, eh, do we though? And then the only reason he continues her mission is because she dies uh, and he feels obligated to. Like, this guy right. sucks. <laughs> I don't want him. I don't care. I don't want him coming to defend us. I don't need that. Mm-hmm. And like. Yeah. Well. Boring. And why are it, we introduced so many characters? Like, like who? I don't care about this colonel and this military guy and this grocer. Like, mm-hmm. who cares? There's the probably thing, a reason why he didn't it, show back up for a while. The thing is, is again, I, I always get the feeling these are like draft one. Like someone should have looked at this and gone, okay, you have good ideas here, but start the story on the moon and then have it get to Earth eventually. Like the way that the story is told is so confusing. It's like we introduced to a guy, then he gets knocked out, then there's a flashback, then he has a dream that connects to the flashback. Like it's just... It's it's a mess. It's a total mess. And these yeah. characters, like, they're supposed to be comic relief because they're arguing. They're they don't click. They're not funny. It's just the the only thing I'll give it is that it because the art is so unskilled, it almost has like an independent uh, comic charm to it. Like you're hmm. kind of it's almost like a well, I hate to say it, but like it's like a kid creating the comic, so it has that kind of charm to it. But um, I know like. It's just not good. It's weird, though, because it's hard to say that, like, it's hard to buy that point because mm-hmm. all the characters are, like, half naked. And That's it's almost true. like the, the the moon people almost have this weird, like, um, 
Star Trek original series quality. Yes. Of like hot alien people. Mm -hmm. And it feels it just the whole thing felt weird. You know, to be fair, the costumes on the aliens are okay. Like this one guy, like they kind of just look like, well, generic, but not terribly designed. Like this one guy here is almost like a He-Man toy. Right. right yeah. I was going to say it, it has like a fantasy sci-fi feel, right, but yeah. except for Starman, because he has to be a superhero, of course. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I almost feel like this whole issue could have been him escaping the planet and then the cliffhanger that we're left on is him crash landing on earth You're right issue two is we're introduced to the two colonels arguing and trying to figure out where the story leads next right 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 and we could kind of have a little bit of time at least with Alyssa or whatever the alien girl that showed yeah. up for two panels before she was vaporized into dust like we right. could have some time with her to care that she's dead you know, if we if we saw her disagreeing with the council and like seeing her point of view, like, yeah, she's right. This is wrong. And then it's immediately killed off. And our main character now has to kind of take on that mantle. It feels like we're on that journey with them and we're, we're you know, we agree with them. But at this point, we're kind of just like, listen, the bad guys want to do bad things. So. Make sure you like the good guy. Like it's, I don't know. They don't really, uh, they just kind of tell you they're, these are the bad guys. And um, I feel like that's like really the strongest point against this comic. Well, that's anyway, what's that? The strongest point against it is that it sucks. <laughs> it's right. pretty rough. It's pretty rough. So here's the thing is, this revival of Starman obviously didn't work because he didn't appear again ever. <clears throat> so then only a few short years later, DC tried to revive the name again. So that was 1976. Now we're in, what year is this now? Ah, who knows? 78 maybe? <clears throat> now we're introduced to a new version of Starman called Prince Gavin, and this is in now Adventure Comics, actually the same series as the other one, Adventure Comics 467, and this was uh, during a time when uh, these comics were an anthology, and so Plastic Man is also on the cover, but now, again, for those listening out there, this is the star man who has a red shirt, yellow pants, red boots, um, quantum bands just like Quasar, and then a big yellow star on his chest, and kind of like a star pattern on his Torso. And kind of like um, a cat helmet. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's actually a cool helmet. I like it. And we should also point out that the artist on this is Steve Ditko, co creator of Spider Man and Doctor mm. Strange. Yep. Who is going to do the honors of summarizing this issue? Is it G.I. Julie? Was it Absolutely to be not. Me? No. Okay. <laughs> like, it's supposed to be me. Rebecca. Okay. Rebecca. Uh, ew. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Use my what are you, name. my grandmother? Awful. <laughs> I haven't called that in years. Um, yeah, no, this one also sucked. Um, <laughs> there you go. The yeah, that, that's my review. Um, so we start off in space with... And I was so disappointed because I was, like, excited to read Plastic Man. And uh, that's sorry. not what I got to read. Yeah, I know. No. Um, so we start off in space and Starman is just casually stopping some sort of spaceship and coming aboard and the guy's like oh thanks so much for saving us starman hey our leader whose name is what was it it's like lord evil man or whatever his name <laughs> actually is like lord the evilest guy you've ever heard of with, no like, it's the his most name is lord protector oswin guardian of the galactic rift and elect of the empire yeah and definitely <laughs> not a bad guy yeah. um doctor super good and, uh, this guy, yeah. he's like hey come on in starman let me let me show you around my ship and starman's like yeah no problemo there and then we quickly cut to a man being tortured in another room yeah. we're like oh i didn't know he was gonna be evil damn as they're as he's watching a tv of starman <laughs> walking through the ship yeah so weird so weird. They're like they can't hear you scream that glass is like whatever it's like well they did hear him though like starman's like what was that sound uh -huh. um 
whatever. So then they go and they're like, oh, Starman, he's legendary, if, even though he's just shown up, but I've already heard of him. Um, <laughs> so I guess he's gone on a couple of adventures, but this guy's still getting tortured. So then um, there's a little bit of a backstory of like some some lady being crowned, whatever. Don't irrelevant. Yeah, um, nothing happens with that. Yeah, nothing happens with that. And and then you, f- you find out that the guy was evil and he's trying to steal the throne. <gasps> Who would have suspected? But it turns uh. out that Starman knew this the whole time. Crazy. Um, a fight ensues. Starman kicks everyone's ass, like, like aggressively. Like, he's very overpowered. And nobody can believe it for some reason. <laughs> um... And Starman is this is the first Starman with a personality, and I hate it. Um, he's such a little shit. <laughs> but then the torturer guy comes out, and he's the only one who can hurt Starman with his little prod rod thing. Um, but then Starman just punches him and saves the saves the guy who's just, and who was cap- kidnapped. And then they are like, "Oh, how are we gonna get to the airlock to escape? We'll never make it out." Of there, and Starman's like, "Don't worry, it just blows a hole in the hull of the ship, which wouldn't work." <laughs> and I know it's a comic book, but it still made me mad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this guy's like, "Whoa, how are you just walking around in space?" And Starman's like, "I'm built different. Like, don't worry." About it. <laughs> um, I am. Space. He all but says that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Don't shut, shut up. Who are you? Whatever." Um, and then Starman takes him back to his base with his mentor named Mentor. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then drops what are you talking about this is the worst one this is clearly the best one <laughs> and then he's like hey man I know you were just tortured and I saved you and I know who you are and you don't know who I am but also we need to fight for the rest of our lives right now <laughs> and he's like what and then the comic ends <laughs> next uneasy lies the crown okay somehow this was the best one I think, I think so. I think I love really? it. Um, I, I got to say, okay, start, first of all, the art is actually pretty good. I mean, Steve did go. Mm-hmm. It's not say, are you sure you're not letting the art cloud your judgment on this one? <laughs> Here's the thing. I got to say, I didn't. Okay. First of all, I reviewed this on Flea Market Fantasy. And then before that, I read it on my own. And I was actually surprised how good it was. It actually made me sit up and take notice of Paul Levitz, whom we all know because he was the publisher of DC Comics for like 20 years. So he was a, the big man on campus for a while. But I actually thought the writing was pretty good. Now, when I say writing, I mean mostly the dialogue. The plot was a little bit ridiculous. But I didn't hate it, though. I didn't hate it. But Jolie, sounds like you hated it. I didn't hate it. I liked the art. And I, I'm kind of letting the art cloud my judgment. And that's why I'm trying to cast cast doubt on your, um, on your critique. <laughs> Because, like, I'm trying to hide behind yours. Um, I, here's the thing. It wasn't, it wasn't super likable. I, like Becca, hated this star man. He's <laughs> a piece of shit. Um, he's kind of, like, sassy in a, I don't like your hair kind of way. Mm. <laughs> uh, and there's something about the costume that, I love his costume. Yeah. It's I... stupid. It's so dumb how many stars there are on it. Are on it. We get it. Yeah, You're Starman. Yeah. <laughs> like it's he's, it's I'm absolutely all the stars, insane. He's yeah, got he's like, his mask is a star. He's got a gigantic star on his chest and a gigantic star on his back. And then in between all those stars are tiny little stars just like filling up his costume. It is uh-huh. ridiculous. He is Stars Man. Stars Man. Yeah. And then... Um, the names are not as ridiculous as um, the last issue. The last ones, the last issue, the names were stupid, but they took themselves mm. seriously. In this one, the names are still stupid, but it's a comic, and it's it's a little more tongue in cheek than the last one. Also, the art's really good. Mm-hmm. I Except think for you know some some super hyper extended legs, but that's. I can forgive those. That's comics. I, this one had like a, a feeling that like Paul Levitz was having fun. Steve Ditko was having fun. But the the last one, Mike, the Mac- Macal Thomas, it felt like no one knew what they were doing. 
Like they're like, okay, we got to fill 12 pages. Let's just get them out or whatever. This one felt a little bit more like it had a purpose, I thought. Uh, yeah. It was like I said, this is the first Starman with a personality. Like, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> I he's kind a of, douche. I kind of like that he's a douche. It makes yeah, I him. I mean, he's a king, right? Or yeah, he's he's well, like this prince, prince yeah. emperor guy. I kind of like that he's like, I'm pretty fucking great, aren't I? Yeah. Like this is like I'm fantastic. I'm right. so good at all this superhero stuff. And I also kind of like that he's even. It's kind of ambiguous, almost, if he's even like privy to the fact that he's being trapped. Like, he's just, like, walking around with the guy, like, right. hmm, pretty cool ship, I guess. Yeah, this, all this stuff's pretty cool. Anyways, I gotta go do more cool king shit. I'll be, I gotta yeah. go. I love <laughs> you know, how it, he sort of half-heartedly is, like, he also is, like, well, I don't even know what my limits are, but here's to testing them all yeah. in, in outer space. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that he's a little little jerk. It might get old after a while, so he, he probably does do better with the ensemble like having mm -hmm. characters that kind of ground him but um for this one issue i kind of liked his like flamboyant kind of aloof attitude that he has i i'm gonna guess that um he was partly inspired by the types of characters errol flynn would play like robin hood mm. and uh captain blood like just these free-spirited swashbuckling um like fearless people like him just walking out into space and him just doing whatever that mm. kind of reminds me of that attitude so maybe that's what partly inspired him now i will say that this version of starman did last 12 issues good for him Whew, and is that a record for starman's it is well no the first starman appeared a lot longer but this one uh then he went on to appear a couple times in dc comics presents and then he died in crisis but then he was brought right. back, so it doesn't matter. But this one was a little bit more successful. Um, and to be honest, knowing that there's only 12 appearances, like originally, I would actually go back and read these, I think. So if there's a Starman collection out there, I'm a looking for it, okay? Hmm. Is there? I might I'm read I'm sure more. there is. I'm sure there is. So here's the thing, folks. We've been talking a lot about Starman, but guess what? There's still two more Starmans to talk about. So I think we're going to... We're going to have to leave this episode on a cliffhanger and come hmm. back in two weeks and talk about the other Starmans. Just uh, out of curiosity, uh, <laughs> does anybody... Yeah, um, before we wrap this up, does anyone have any final words to say about the three Starmans that we talked about today? Uh, cool. Oh. Next time. We okay, all go. Go. I, I, simultaneously. It, no, I love Ted Knight. He's my Starman. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how... These are all like technically considered the same character, but are all so unbelievably different from each other and don't really necessarily have even the same powers. Like no. it's the same character it's, it's, in name alone. It's only in, in name alone. We should point out that Starman 2 and Starman 3 appeared only a few years apart. So they exist at the same time, right? They're both on Earth 1. They just happen to have the same name. What's that, Becca? Well, which Starman? Because like... Technically, so they're like there's there's the Starman that was Batman. Okay, right? well does that He's Starman too? You're right. Technically, um, I'll just say Mikhail Mikhail Thomas. It's Starman three. Yeah, right? and then Prince Gavin appeared at the same time around. Yeah. Which so number? Which number? Star Starman is David Bowie. Seven. Number one. Okay. In our hearts, no, he's number one. To be course. fair, and then which one is uh, Jeff Bridges, right? The movie. Come on, guys. Yeah. I don't know that ref <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you guys have never seen John Carpenter's Starman? No. It's awesome. It's awesome. Jeff Bridges mm. is an alien that comes to Earth, and uh, the girl is Karen Allen from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's a good oh. movie. Wait, maybe. Yeah. This should... sounded very familiar. It's one of those movies everyone's seen when they're a kid, but they forget. If you look it up, here we are, Jeff. Jeff Bridges. Bridges. There it is. 1984. Oh, yeah, I have not seen it. Happy this. birthday to me. <laughs> so, All Becca, right. it's on your list. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> yeah, we right will next. 
see you other. all again in two weeks. I hope you're all available and remember to dress in exactly the same clothes. And Got Josh, it. you can take it from here. Thank you guys also for listening to this podcast or watching it. Uh, you can find all of our stuff over on our website at thecomicbooksyndicate.com. Uh, you can also find our stuff on YouTube or Spotify and all that good stuff. Uh, leave us a comment. Leave us a review. Let us know what you guys think about the podcast and the comics and things that we're talking about. Uh, yeah, keep in touch and let's keep that comics conversation going. That's right. So until the next time, see you later. Woo. Thank you.